series just got interesting. Um, <coughs> Paul George Harden, they lead their team 116-111. This thing is tied now at two apiece. Paul George with 33. James Harden had 33. He was fun to watch. Kyrie Irving with 40. Luka Doncic, fourth career playoff triple-double. All of those have come against the Clippers. Um, the comeback, though, look, they were down by as many as 31 points. The fact that this even became a game, I suppose, Lou, is what we should focus on here. But how, how do you get down 31 in the first place? Luca picked up two quick fouls with, within the first three minutes of that game, and I think that set the tone defensively for the Dallas Mavericks. Um, and, and, on, and on top of that, the, the damn Clippers were just making shots. Big time shot makers. Paul George uh, started that game 19 in, I think, the first or second quarter. Right off the bat, James Harden was attacking. You know, we talked about the Minnesota Timberwolves and their team wins. The Clippers are turning that corner, and they're getting a lot of production from a lot of guys. Amir Coffey is giving them good production. Norman Powell, Terrence Mann, uh, uh, Zucci Mann. A lot, they got a lot of guys outside of their, <laughs> their big three with Kawhi being out that are giving them really good minutes and really good production. And got to listen, let's tilt our hat off to James Harden. All this year, he's been the guy that said, hey, I'm here to set the table. I'm here to facilitate. I understand my role. But the minute a guy goes out, I'm going to remind you exactly who I am and what I can bring to the table. Give James Harden a lot of credit. But Paul George has been the anchor to this and given him a lot of, a lot of production, a lot of good, good minutes. So how impressive was it that they got up to 31? Give Dallas credit. Dallas is a big-time shot-making team. Was able to walk that down. Ended up going up one yeah. um, with an opportunity to win this basketball game. But the Clippers held on by, by James Harden getting hot again in the fourth quarter. I mean, Chandler, what did you see from your, your this Mavericks team? This is this is y'all's little bet here. This is this is the best series going so far. It really is. Yeah, I mean, they scored 16 points in the first quarter. They were, they were a brutal, and Paul George went absolute bananas. And and I think the Clippers, when you look at their offense without Kawhi Leonard, they're not deferring to him. They're not getting their guy that's been their best player all year long, trying to rally around him. When he's out, they're rocking. And now, like 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 Lou said. They get it, they get something from Terrence Mann, from Norman Powell, from Amir Coffey. So it's almost a more balanced attack. Everyone's doing their part. And James Harden, people love to talk shit about him when he when he plays bad in the playoffs. He's been unbelievable, and he's always been capable of scoring. He's always been a ball dominant guy, but now he's taking care of the ball. He's setting up other guys. He's being aggressive when he needs to. PG, I said, had an insane first half. He's hitting tough shots. So the fact that they gave up, they only scored 16 points in the first quarter. You can't get down. You can't get down that best. There was a valid comeback. It was crazy how they even took the lead and had a chance to win this game. How bad they looked early. I thought this game was over. Mm -hmm. I, I thought That'd it was. They were dead. Yeah. But the way they play, Kyrie Irving was unbelievable. Luke was unbelievable. The way they play, they're never out of a game. But they they can't do that. They can't give. They can't score 16 points. Which then they gave up 16 points in the third quarter. So they defended and they came with a totally different team in the second half. So this, this was. I, I respect the comeback. But when you get down so much to a team like this, that's too talented. That's hard. Yeah, I mean, there were some blowout games, so it was easy to think, oh, here's another one. But then it turned into something. What did you take away from it? James Harden being the ma maestro of this team, and he has – here's the staff for you. He's got one of the best true shooting percentages of any player in the NBA playoffs, rivaling Nikola Jokic, 72%. Hmm. I mean, when you look at his stats, 33 points, 7 assists. He had 15 in the fourth quarter. To me, he's been – the best clipper so far in this series, the most consistent clipper so far in this series, arguably the best player in this series, the way he's been playing. And you, you saw just the adjustments that the Clippers made. For whatever reason, defensively, the Clippers decided to go to more of a drop coverage in games uh, in two and three. And that meant it was lob central for the Mavericks. He's a lively and Daniel Gafford and all these guys getting dunks. And then they went back to switching. They played switching style defense in game one. They went back to that in game four. I think that was a big adjustment Ty Lue and his coaching staff made. And when I think of James Harden in past playoffs, he'll revert sometimes to maybe shooting threes yep. and shooting step back shots late in games, late in the playoffs. But I'm told he made an adjustment in this series. He knows that there are avenues open for him to get the floater off. He did that, and, and he's been working with one of his trainers, Chuck Ellis, out of Philadelphia. And, and Chucky Ailes. And, and he made sure he went into this series making the right adjustments. And he saw that. We saw James Harden make two, three floaters late in the game yeah. Oh, yeah. last night. And he, he was living on that. And he was, he, playing, was he was playing chess. He knew Luka had five fouls, couldn't really guard him how he wanted to. They were seeking out the switches. And he was just attacking them, going downhill. And like you said, lob threats. Uh, Zubak, he's a lob threat. So every time James Harden went downhill, Gafford had to respect that, and he was able to use that to his, his advantage. And then when, you, when you're done with James Harden, you got PG making <laughs> tough shots, yeah. you know? I think, listen, when it comes to Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they are two of the top ten players 
in the NBA when healthy. And what we're seeing now is a healthy Paul George. We're seeing somebody who's not laboring on his shoulder, who's not la laboring on his feet, the, um, the issues that he's had over his career. He's healthy and he's playing like it. Uh, 13 points, 5 of 6 shooting for James Harden in clutch time, Chandler. I, I, look, he's got his own set of All narratives. All floaters, by the way. Yeah, and they were fun to watch. Like, All whee! Look at this. <laughs> What'd you think? I loved it, and I love that he was aggressive. I love that he was attacking Luca, making him play <laughs> both ends of the floor uh, with with him in foul trouble as well. And listen, he's always been one of the most elite scorers. He can do it all. I do think he settles sometimes with his step back, but these floaters, it, it's, this looked like the same play over it and did. over. Five straight floaters. He put yeah. his folks to sleep with floaters. It's crazy, and he's always been able to lull you to sleep. And again, he usually settles with those step back, but I think he knew he had a mismatch with Luka. He knew he was trying not to get a sixth foul, and, and this was just a great performance. He's going to need to have performances like this, especially with Kawhi Leonard now. It's, it's similar to the Milwaukee one. Giannis was out. Dame's got to be the guy. There's no such thing as a bad shot. Hmm. This is going to fall on these two guys, and they do have the luxury of being deep. They do have a deep bench, so that helps when they have a guy out. But this is James Harden and Paul George while Kawhi Leonard are out, and last night they were both efficient. They were smart. They got to their spots. They didn't turn the ball over too much. Uh, and, and these are experienced guys that James Harden has something to prove. All he needs on that resume is a championship. So he seems to be locked in. He seems to be committed. Uh, and they need more of this, especially with Kawhi Leonard out. I mean, look, they, they've won the two games where Kawhi's been out. That's just a fact. I'm not saying anything about it. But Paul George had that three with two minutes left um, that was basically the lead for good. I mean, if you're a Clippers fan, this was about as good as you could expect, right? He was making shots at a high level. Insane high shot. level. It, yes, mm. elite shot making. <laughs> elite shot making and, and bringing this home in, in front of your home fans in, in a pivotal game five, this is going to be key. He's going to gonna have, to, he's gonna have to bring this home with him. And I'm sure he doesn't have a problem with it. James Harden is going to have to bring this home with him. These guys are going to have to get deep in their bags in order to get this pivotal game five win. I like their chances with these guys playing like that, but it's going to come on the shoulders of James Harden and Paul George making these type of shots. It's got to, Chandler. It's got to. They have no choice. Yeah, I mean, that shot in the corner, that's, that's insane. I think we're sitting here today talking about how bad of a shot it is if it didn't go in, but he had a rhythm. He, he, he got going, and again, there's no bad shot for him, so he needs to be aggressive. He needs to continue to do this. Uh, and, the, and the Mavs are going to have their hands full now going back to L.A. Second quarter, hits a three, and then does the P.J. Washington pose <laughs> from game it. three. Yeah, how do you – who doesn't like this, guys? We love it. That's what playoff basketball is about. Talking <laughs> trash and getting <laughs> into – yeah, getting in each other's heads and making sure you pay for any little thing that you put on the board, you're going to pay for it. I love this. Yeah, this is – this. I, I'm petty, and this is – this is <laughs> all. I mean, I, that's great. You start this and then you do this and then it's going to bite you in the ass sometimes and people don't forget. Guys will not forget. And now P.J. Washington is probably going to be a play later where he's going to do it back to him. Oh, and yes. then, and then the, the Mavs win, it changes. And this, I love this. This year, these teams seem like they don't like each other. Westbrook has brought so much intensity and physical. And, and I, so I love the fact the banter, it goes back and forth. This is what it's all about. This is why it's <laughs> exciting series to watch. Yeah, I want my playoff teams to dislike each other. Uh, that's the way it should be. But Kawhi, as we mentioned, they're 2-0 without him. Do we see him back in this series? The expectation is Kawhi Leonard is going to miss more time here. With the knee inflammation, the Clippers actually made the decision as an organization after seeing Kawhi Leonard play in games two and three to shut him down for game four. And until they feel like he has enough mo mobility in that knee, he's been dealing with inflammation. That's the same knee that he, right knee that he had, a torn ACL in 2021. Last year in 2023, he had a torn meniscus on that knee. So this is something where Kawhi Leonard has to manage it. And you can, you can afford to give him time. The way James Harden's playing, the role that Paul George is playing, those two guys showed in game one and game four that they can lead this group and they can win. And I think there is so much confidence internally with that Clippers organization in the locker room with T. Lou as the head coach that they can figure out the right adjustments, the right style around these two guys because it's really led by them. You saw Paul George last night, uh, yesterday. He, he led it. He started off the game hot, and then James closed it. That's a recipe for success, and um, I, I think they're going to have to continue to play on here without Kawhi Leonard. Better without him if he's out there hobbled and not giving you much. Um, Kyrie, if you weren't paying attention to this game yesterday, social media kind of blew up because it was almost like people remembered who Kyrie Irving is. And here's a moment uh, where they were down by 31. This gets them back into the lead. Uh, Lou, does anything surprise you that he can do? Look at Good that. God. Look at that. Not at all. That's ridiculous. Video. I mean, it's been over. It's been over at least five or six years where. 
publicly, all NBA players have said Ky Ky uh, Ky Kyrie Irving is one of the best finishers in the, in the game. And this, this finish right here, <laughs> to take the lead, this is exciting. I literally stood up off of my couch and got up. I was a, I was a absolute fan last night watching this basketball game because we were watching some of the best players in the world compete at the highest level that you can imagine trying to get a, trying to get a win. And Kyrie Irving was right there at the top of the list with the best of them. I mean, just insane shot making. It wasn't even just that layup. He had insane shot yeah. making all night. And I got, I got to give the Mavericks fans a lot of credit. I was looking at the score a few times, of like watching the game in the first half, and they were down 20, 24, whatever. And the Mavs fans were hyped. Yeah. Like maybe they knew something we didn't know. Like this team was making a comeback. But Kyrie Irving obviously kept them in the game in the first half. Shot making ridiculous.